Hello everyone, and welcome back to A Whole Turkey's channel. Today, we will be taking a beginner's look at materials in Unreal Engine 5, and even making our own first master material. <laughs> now, we can either start a brand new project with the starter content selected as on, or we can continue the project we began last time. I'm going to start a new one. If we go this way, we will have to remake the files that we are going to use to keep organized. And we're going to do that by going here into the content folder, right clicking and adding new folder. So then once we have our materials folder, we're going to go ahead, and click on that, right click and go to material. And we're going to name this master but you can name it whatever you want and then i'm going to right click that and create a material instance i'm going to drag both into the world right here and then we're not going to worry about the, the instance for right now and we're going to come back to it once that's been made and dragged in we can double click on our master material to go to our event graph and you should see a window like this pop up now this will show our result node which is going to be the output of our material. And we will change what our material looks like by plugging values into this. On the upper left, we will get a preview of how all those changes will take place in either a sphere, cube, or other shape. The very first thing we are gonna plug in is our color tint. In Unreal Engine, colors are called constant vectors. And the one we are going to look for is a constant three vector. And then we are going to plug that into the base color pin. And now we can change the color of our material. Oh, well, we see that this dark slider is all the way down. So we got to bring that up. And so now we can see the color apply to our material. However, this effect will not be saved or seen in world until you press the apply button to compile your changes. Then once it compiles, you will see the change take place. Now we have metallic, which for Unreal Engine is clamped from zero to one. If you hold one down and you left click, you will get a constant value. Connect this and we will see no change in our material because zero is the default. It will change as you raise it. And then it will stop changing once you get to one. This will normally only ever be zero for non-metals or one for metals. We are going to set this back to zero and move on. We're going to skip specular input for now and move on to the roughness. It is also clamped from zero to one. If we hold one and left click, we will get another constant value. And this time when we plug it in, we will see a change in our material. And that is because the default roughness value is 0.5. Also, you should know that the best mirror material will have a roughness of zero and a metallic of one. I'm going to set these both back to their defaults for now and keep moving. We will skip anisotropy at this time and go on to the emissive color. So if we try to give the emissive color a constant value like we did the metallic and roughness, at first we'll see no change because its default is also zero. But as we bring it up, we will see it emit a white light. And this is pretty cool. But if we want it to emit the color of the material we have, then we're going to have to multiply these to combine the two. We can make a multiply node by holding down M and left clicking. And then dragging both our value and our color in and bringing that output to our emissive value. And now we will see it will shine that color at different intensities. I'm just gonna go ahead and return this to its default for now. And the last item we should be concerned with right now is the normal. This is typically used to define where shadows are expected to appear, but we will come back to this in a moment. For now, all you need to know is that the default value for this is a constant three vector that has been set to all blue and then apply. 
So now we have a master material, except it's full of default values we'll likely need to change later. And this is where the material instance comes in. The material instance detail panel is going to look different than that of our master material. There will not be an event graph, and it is limited to whatever your master material has inputted into it. However, the master material will allow us to easily change settings that have been turned into parameters, and we'll be able to see these changes in real time, which means we won't have to click apply to see or save the changes in our level. So to turn a setting into a parameter, just right click and press convert to parameter. Give it an appropriate name. And now, after you apply, you can see that we can change that in our material instance. And that change will even take place in the real world or in your level in real time without having to press apply. So we are going to do this with our metal, our roughness, and our emissive values. And then make sure to hit apply when you're done. So now our material instance can take advantage of all of these values and change them in real time. Now, Unreal Engine has been allowing some updates from your master to be seen in the world. However, if you were to close down that window without pressing apply, you would see those changes revert back. So it's not fully saved into the world until you compile it. Unlike our material instance, which is saved just when you're done setting the settings. So now we have a decent master material, but it is neglecting one of the biggest aspects of Unreal Materials, and that is textures. These are behind the most realistic surfaces and assets. So here is where we're going to be pulling some textures from Unreal Starter Pack. Now you're going to go to textures and find brick clay old. Now we can find this by reading every texture or we can go to the content and type in clay and selecting the last two that we want. Now these are going to be the color and normal textures for brick clay. The t material itself is going to be a lot more complex than this, but this will give you a decent amount of control for your first starter material. We can connect the color texture to the base by holding the RGB pin and dragging it to base color, but then we will lose the effect of our tint. So again here, we're going to need to make another multiply node by holding M and left clicking, and then attaching both of these as inputs and then the output of this to our base color. And then just to make sure we properly update our missive and so that it shows both of these instead of just the tint, we're going to bring this output to this multiply as well and press apply. Roughness is often the alpha or the black and white version of the color texture. And since there are times this will be an input option, we are going to give it its own texture sample by copying the color node. And we can do this with control C or control V. But if you just press control W, it will do the same thing a lot faster. So let's make some space in here real quick. And we're going to connect this to the roughness with an add node. And we can get this by holding A and left clicking, or again by right clicking and typing in add. And we're going to use this to bring this alpha value and this roughness value together and bringing that output into roughness. And so now we can change the roughness value here as well as have the input from our textures. One thing you will notice is that now if you type in negative values, you will see changes occur. And this is because our texture sample will provide values of roughness where they would have otherwise been zero. And now with this tab, we can return all of the values to zero again. Even though it is clamped from 0 to 1, we will see values of negative 1 combined with the texture to bring us back to that 0 output. So now I'm just going to clean this up real quick. And then I'm also going to set this back to its default value of 0 0.5. With the normal texture, we do hit a snag. I don't want to multiply these against each other, and I also don't want to add them. I want to be able to switch between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a switch parameter. And we're going to call this normal text. And here we're going to tie the full blue into the false to run 
by default and our texture sample RGB to run in the true. So that way, when it hits true or becomes true in your material instance, you can select in between having a normal map and not having a normal map. And then hit apply. And then for a little more control with our normal, we're going to add a flatten normal parameter. So we're going to come into here and grab flatten normal, entire output into here, and give us another constant value. So this way, we can make the shadows and edges either more or less pronounced when normal text is switched to true. So you see here's one, there's zero, there's a hundred, and you can see things start to look a lot more worn. So you can play with this, change it around. I'm gonna set it back to its default value of one for now and convert it into a parameter and call it normal strength and then hit apply. Now that it looks good, we're gonna give ourselves the ability to change the size of our texture. Right click off to the side and type in text coordinates. And we are going to tie this into another multiply node and bring that output into the UV pins for all of our materials. And what that will do is we'll designate exactly where on the materials or on the UV maps that show up on objects where on those maps I actually want these colors to appear. And then we're going to add another constant. We're going to convert it to a parameter called size. And you'll see that the image has changed, and that's because the default value here is 1, not 0. So 0 has made our image very, very big. And if we change this to 1, we will get back our normal image. And if we change it to 10, you'll see that there are going to be a lot of them a lot smaller now. And so that's how you can change around your size. So I'm going to set that back to one. And then the very final step is to future proof this. Similar to how we do not yet have a proper texture sample for roughness, there will be texture samples that we may want to use for metallic and emissive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our color texture again, and we're going to bring this in. And then I'm going to run this through an add with our metallic values and bring that into our metallic input. So these two added together into our metallic is going to give us a weird value. So what we want to do is add the default in until we have what we want to actually be our metallic value. And a constant three all black vector does serve the same as a default value for this metallic input. So if we don't have a black placeholder to put into that spot, we can make one ourselves. If you come down to Paint 3D or you have another free painting app and we set our canvas to square, we can come over into Paint, double check that our black has everything set to zero, fill that in, and save that as is as our black placeholder. And save that to the desktop for easy access. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for white. We're going to come in, check our white value, Make sure that everything is turned up to the absolute maximum. And we're going to go ahead and make that in. And we are going to save this as our white placeholder. So now we can leave uh, Paint 3D. We won't need it anymore. Come back to our materials. Make that textures folder so we can stay nice and organized. And then in the textures folder, we are going to drop in both the white and black placeholders. And they should be imported as easily as that. And now what we're going to do is here, go ahead and put that black placeholder right in for our metallic value. And we are going to actually add the white placeholders for our other values. Just so that every time we don't have to have a clay based model. But we'll leave the normal alone since we can just switch that on and off from the default as is and hit apply. For the emissive, it's going to be a little bit advanced, but some people will have emissive values that they will want to make that are separate or special of their own. And so what we're going to do is add this in and make another switch parameter so we can switch between our special image and our emissive color. So let's get another static switch parameter, set it to emissive text, put our normal output into the false, and then put this output into the true. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated. We still want the ability to make this brighter or darker. So we're going to make one last multiply. 
with Control W, bring our emissive value in, our texture value in, and then multiply out to true. And so now we can still control the brightness. And then make sure that all of these are tied to the UV so they show up in the appropriate place. Hit apply. So we did it. You now have a master material ready to go. The only problem is that it's a little bit messy, but we can clean this up just by having the material graph selected and pressing C. And we will get a comment right where our mouse cursor is. And we can use these comments to keep track of what does what in our material. So let me just clean this up real quick. This will also help you from being overwhelmed with messy lines. If you have been setting your values to default with me, you should be left with a white or pink material. This is now the perfect beginner's master material. From here, you can add any existing texture back or create something completely custom. Each new instance will be a brand new Blake canvas to sculpt with. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful in some form. If you have any questions, think I should add a step, or made a mistake, let me know in the comments. Learning is healthy. Like, follow, and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of the many platforms I'm on. And thank you for being here. It took energy to do so, and it would have been easier to not. So thank you. I want to remind you that I do not know where you are, and I don't know what time it is for you when you're watching this. So I would like to wish you a good morning, a great day, and a nice night. I hope to see each and every single one of you back in here real soon. But until I do, please remember to take it easy.